Elizabeth Monroe was a true partner in her husband's career and was a good sounding board for many policies and decisions that he had to evolve. They were a love story, if one ever was. They had absolutely devoted to each other. Elizabeth Monroe had a very well-developed sense of style and image, and her jewelry is a reflection of that. This is a woman who knew how to carry herself with great elegance. She always warranted your respect. It was one of the most splendid White Houses that ever existed. It's called the era of good feeling. This is a woman who spoke French, and my goodness, what she could talk about. Elizabeth was a very great beauty, described in one letter as a rose petal beauty. But Mrs. Monroe received very seldom anything at the White House. She was a recluse. Absolutely hated it. Hospitality, decorum, dignity, civility. Those are the words that come to mind. Louisa Catherine Adams, in the White House, almost disappeared. The public side of the job, I don't think ever particularly provided much pleasure. She's sort of an unsung first lady who deserves much more exploration than she has received. The relationship between Louisa and John Quincy is elusive and in many ways distressing. I don't think he realizes what a treasure he had. And it's interesting because his father did. Old John Adams took to her. Abigail never really did, but, but John did. She was born in England and educated in France, and she remained a foreign personality to many of the Adamses, but not to Henry as a world traveler himself. She was very well educated, very sophisticated, socially, I would say. And she sort of entertained John Quincy's road to the White House. She was not happy about returning to Washington as the wife of a congressman. 